San Diego. And one of these gumshoes could find her. He was born in Greece and likes to play basketball. Meet Dennis Theokinilakis. She's from Long Island and Norway and likes Irish dancing. Meet Kathleen Halverson. His grandparents came from China and he's a fan of the New York Knicks. Meet NBC. Great crowd, guys. Good to see you guys. Hey, Andy, how you doing, man? Kathleen, good to see you. Dennis, good to see you, too, man. Hey, listen, they're with me every day. Rockabella! Aha! Uh -huh. Also, a quick reminder, the one of you that catches car in San Diego today is going to get that trip to anywhere in North America, and that is not bad, folks. So, Chief, who are we after? This is Patty Larceny. But, but, but Patty. Looks sweet, acts discreet. Thinks that stealing's kind of neat. Her last known whereabouts, the border between Brazil and Argentina. With a span of over two miles, the mighty Iguazu are the world's widest waterfalls. When the churning waters of the Iguazu River cascade over cliffs and crash into the gorge below, the earth shakes and the roar deafens. As water hits the rocks, a cloud of mist rises into the air. And so, local Guarani Indians call this area the place where clouds are born. It's also the place where spectacular rainbows are constantly reborn as sunlight meets the mist. At least it was until today. When Patty Larceny wandered near the thundering waters and devised a devious deed for a rainbow ripoff, she positioned a mirror just right so it reflected the light into her rainbow robber. Now the world is in black and white and Patty's keeping the colored light for herself. Gumshoe, I'm counting on your brilliance to solve today's case. Minimum security prism. Oh yeah, I got to. All right guys, trying to find Patty and the rainbows to help you out. We're gonna start you off with 50 Agme crime bucks. Anytime you answer a question correctly, I'm going to give you 10 more crime books. And the two of you with the most score at the end of this round will then proceed to the next round. So let's get started now with our very first clue of the Greg. afternoon. Whoa, Chief, that mustache is styling. You know, your, your girls are much better than mine, actually. Oh, Greg, I just opened this clue that came in the mail and this flew up and stuck to my lip. Say, so didn't Salvador Dali have a mustache like that? You know, he was one of the most famous painters of all time. Yep. Patty must be in the city just south of the Pyrenees Mountains, where Dolly was born. He first made his name in the surrealist art world of the 1920s. Now see, surrealists paint strange, dreamlike scenes with a very detailed, realistic style. Now look at this Dolly painting called The Disintegration of the Persistence of Memory. See, the watches here look realistic, except they're kind of melting. And who knows what that fish is doing there. Maybe it's a carp. Hmm? I gotta tell you, Chief, it's downright surreal. It really is. You know, you have such a way with words, Greg. <laughs> now, get back on the case. And this has been fun, but it's gotta go. It's got... <clears throat> Greg, it's stuck. I can't get it off. It's starting Greg... to come off right there. Just keep it, keep it coming. Uh... It'll... You know, it's gonna make a great disguise. Anyway. Okay, Gumshoes, name the city where Patty has taken the rainbows, if you will, please. Is it Bucharest, Romania, Figueres, Spain, or Milan, Italy? Remember the clues that we heard just south of the Pyrenees Mountains and birthplace of surrealist Salvador Dali. Once you're ready, holding up there nice and high. Andy's ready, so is Kathleen. Dennis still thinking about it. And now he's ready. Andy, we come to you. What do you say, buddy? Greece. Uh, Figueres, Spain. What do you think, Kathleen? I also said Figueres. Figueres, Spain. Dennis, what do you think? I also said Figueres, Spain. Everybody said the same thing, and everybody is right. Thank you. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Okay, now for our very next clue. Oh, it's Rockapella. If you wish to find the missing rainbows, Georgia is the state where you must go. Golfing town on the Savannah River. Pack your clubs, your plaid pants, then you go 
golfers will dream. Driving up a foot chipping wedge, driving up a foot They dream of the day. The Masters Tournament invites them to play. Focus on the ball. Watch the pros smack it. The winner gets a check and a green jacket. On greens they drive to win. On greens they'll trot it in. On greens they try time after time to beat old golf pros. On greens, on greens, driving up a foot chipping wedge, driving up a foot chipping wedge, driving up a foot chipping wedge at four. Rockapella, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gumshoes, name the place where Patty is taking the rainbows now. Is it Anderson, Augusta, or Jekyll Island? Remember the clues that we heard in Georgia on Savannah River, home of the Masters Golf Tournament, and winner gets a nice green jacket. Andy is ready. Kathleen and Dennis still thinking about it. Now Kathleen is ready. So is Dennis. Andy, we come to you first, buddy. What do you say? I chose Anderson. Anderson. Kathleen, what do you think? I chose Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island. Dennis, what do you say? I chose Augusta. Augusta. The answer we're looking for is Augusta. Nice job, Dennis. And just a little reminder to all of you at home, all of our answers have been verified by National Geographic World. National Geographic World. Thank you, fellas. Now we also found out that it's time for my most favorite part of the show, which is the lightning round. Hit me! I'm okay. Now, we just learned that Patty is in the Canary Islands. All these questions are going to be about the Canary Islands, so hands on your buzzers, guys. Five crime bucks for every correct answer, and that's how it will sound when we actually hit the buzzer. Thank you, Andy. Here's the first question. Some Canary Islanders once used a language called sealbow to communicate across dis distant canyons. Did sealbow include whistling, yodeling, or the use of cellular phones? Andy. Wh whistling? Whistling's right. Nice job. Fire for you, Andy. Yeah. Question number two. One Canary Island restaurant is famous for its unique way of cooking meat. Do they use heat from volcanic vents, electricity from electric eels, or atomic charcoal briquettes? Dennis. Atomic charcoal briquettes. Is nicely said, but the wrong answer. Sorry about that. Kathleen or Andy? Andy. Second one? Uh, it's not the second one either. Kathleen. First one. The first one, heat from volcanic vents, is right. Fabulous work, Kathleen. Way to hang back. 65 for you. Here's the last one. Much of the sand in the dunes at one Canary Island natural park comes from somewhere else. But how does the sand get there? Is it dropped by helicopters, delivered by amphibious camels, or blown in from the Sahara Desert, Andy? Third. Blown in from the Sahara Desert? Well, I'll tell you, the Canary Islands are only 60 miles away from Africa's Sahara Desert. That's right. Nice job. Five for you. All right, guys. Very nice job. Now, for our next clue, we, uh, what is our... Greg, you come yes, to you... the office, please. We have to do the contest. Okay, Chief, be right there. Got a meeting with the Chief. I also have a, a special training exercise for you guys, so meet me in the alley in just a couple of minutes. Be right back. All right. Just, you... Before you say anything, I just want to say this. You know, whenever you say Greg in my office right away, I just got to say, I love it when you say that, because it's just so you, you know? Oh, well, yes, I suppose I do say that a lot. <laughs> it, it, it's a classic Chiefism. Yes. Well, uh, we better do the contest. Sure. Write down what got stolen and from where each time you watch the show. When you've collected four loots and locations, put them on a postcard with your name and address and send it to Acme Crime Net, P.O. Box 4300, New York, New York, 10163. Every day we'll pick five people whose lists are correct and send them each a Carmen T-shirt. Here's today's winners. Congratulations to the winners! Did you see there? That's another one. That's one of those things you always say. Well, yeah. All right. I guess I do have a few chiefisms. 
it's, it's like the thing you do with the magnifying glass, for example. Oh, you mean this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's classic. It is yeah. classic. Oh, yeah, I love it, too. And what about I the do. time, uh, you, you, the way you used to, uh, you used to jump up and down and cluck like a, like a chicken whenever you were just getting ready to nab a crook. Remember that? No, I, I, no, I don't remember that. I don't oh, remember that. Cluck, 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 you were so famous cluck, for the way you used to cluck like a chicken. Cluck, 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 cluck. Yeah, I guess I do remember that. I used to call you old chief cluck, cluck. Cluck, I remember that time we got the feathers and we put them on. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That wasn't you. That was my Uncle Maurice. I'm sorry. That was my mistake. <laughs> okay, guys. Ready for a little training exercise? All right, step right over this way, if you will, please. Everybody grab a trash can. What you guys are going to do is help us hunt for clues to try to find our crook. And what better place to find clues than right here in the trash can? What you're going to do is take the lid off the trash can like this. Oh. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. You'll take a card like this. You'll pick it up. It has the flag of the country we're looking for on, the, on one side. On the other side, you will have a clue. Then to finish your assignment, you will take the trash can lid like this and put it on like this. That's when your assignment is finished, okay? So let's see how fast you guys can do this. On your mark, get set, go! Find the clue. Cheer them on, guys. Cheer them on. Try to find that clue. Yeah. Once you find the purple lid, yeah, look at the first lid. Oh, first lid, second lid is very close. And Dennis, go to finish up. There it is. This was very close here, but I think it was Andy first, then Kathleen, then Dennis. So, Andy, you have the, the first uh, card there with your flag. Andy, so you read, tell me, what, what, what does it say on the other side there? Capital. Capital. Okay, I can't tell you that this country has two capitals. One is Sucre, the other is La Paz. Uh, Kathleen, what does yours say? Locator. Okay, one of the locators is that this is a landlocked country. And Dennis, what does yours say? Language. Language. I can tell you there are three official languages here, Spanish, Quechua, and Aymara. Okay, so Andy, you have the first crack at this since you finished the assignment first. Which, what, which country do you think we're talking about? Is it Paraguay, Andorra, or Bolivia? Bolivia. Bolivia is right. Nice job, Andy. Good job. Ten five bucks for you. Way to go. All right, that sound tells us that Abby Bugnett has something. Let's check with a phone tap. Patty, run your rainbows to a country on the Arabian Sea. Hide them in the ruins of an ancient city called Mohenjo-Daro. Oh, you know I love ancient places. They're so old. Well, some people think Mohenjo-Daro is the oldest example of city planning. About 4,000 years ago, its streets were laid out in grids, and every house had a well and was connected to a sewer system. Wow! So what happened? No one can say for sure. As far as we know, the city just mysteriously vanished. <laughs> Gee, Carmen, that's sort of what we make happen to stuff every day. Okay, guys, name the country where Patty is taking the rainbows. Is it Pakistan, Turkey, or Saudi Arabia? Remember the clues that we heard? Country on the Arabian Sea and Mohenjo-Daro civilization. Andy, looks like he knows this. He's very happy over there. He's already got an answer. All right, Dennis is ready, and Kathleen's still thinking about it. And Andy's still happy and looking around, actually. Uh, now we're ready. Andy, we're coming to you. Happy, what do you say? Pakistan. Pakistan. What do you think, Kathleen? I said Pakistan. Same thing. Dennis, what do you say? I said Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the answer we're looking for is Pakistan. Nice job, Andy again, Lee. So here's how we stand now at the end of that round. Andy has 90, Kathleen 75, Dennis 70, Acme Crime Bucks, and we also received word that Patty has just left Pakistan. So let's pick up the chase. Ooh, the chase. <laughs> Okay, guys, all these worth five at me. Crime books, hands on your buzzer. Watch the monitor. Listen carefully. Here we go. Patty fled to the capital city of Freetown. What country is she in? <coughs> Kathleen. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is right. Then she strolled into Senegal's capital. Name it. <coughs> Kathleen. Tripoli. Sorry, it's the car. Patty ran the rainbows to Burkina Faso. What major river did she cross? Andy. Zambezi. Sorry, it's Niger. Next, she laid low in Lake Volta. What country is she in now? Kathleen. Ghana. Ghana is right. Patty beat it to the east into a neighboring country. Name it. Andy. Ghana. Sorry, it's Togo. That means at the end of the chase round, Andy has 90 acme crime. Kathleen, 85. Dennis, 70. Big round of applause, everybody.